Greetings and welcome to Productivity Talks by Asian Productivity Organization, APO. I'm Son from the APO Secretariat, and I'll be your host for today's session. Today's topic is very exciting, and we will explore a new areas of productivity application with the topics HALA certification optimization through productivity. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may know, the global HALA market is expanding rapidly projected to rise by $3 trillion by 2026, HALA certifications now extend beyond religious practice and become a global standard for quality, hygiene, and ethical practices with demand growing in both Muslim and non-Muslim market. We also recently received a high interest from April member in HALA certification, which is the reason for this P talk today. So in this talk, today talk, we explore what is HALA certification, the step involved, and how productivity tool can be adopted to streamline the certification process, improve performance, and tap into the growing HALA market. So we're honored to have with us today, Dr. Marco Timon, Chief Executive Officer, LBB International Malaysia. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Marco Timon. Dr. Marco Timon, thank you very much for joining our P talk today. How are you, sir, today? Thank you, Mr. Sean. Thank you for inviting. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dr. Marco, for joining our P talk. I know you are very busy, and thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, so, uh, our viewer, before we move to the main part, so let me introduce briefly about our resource person today. So, Dr. Marco Timon is the Chief Executive Officer of LBB International, a supply chain strategies, consultancies, and research firm from Malaysia providing supply chain analysis, supply chain design, and market research for agri-food, industrial, port, and logistic company. He's an adjunct professor with Saito University College in Malaysia and a senior fellow with IPMI International Business School in Indonesia, conducting research on HALA procurement strategies, HALA logistics, HALA supply chain management, and HALA ecosystem. He about member of AI Madina Heritage Company and the Hala Product Development Company in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He also a member of the Technical Committee DC number 10 in Hala Supply Chains under OIC FIIC Turkey. He is the author of Hala Business Man Management, a guide to achieving Hala excellence published in Ruth London in 2021. He has a Master of Science in Industrial Engineering and Management Science from 12th University in the Netherlands and a PhD in business management from UITM in Malaysia. So, thank you, Dr. Marco. As a not mid-taken, you have been working in Hala business for more than two decades and also be invited speaker in various related events and publish so many publications on this topic. So, I think that it's very obvious that you have a great passion on Hala business. So, can you say with us how you get into the Hala business? Thank you, Mr. Son. Uh, so I was invited in the halal industry back in 2006. I was living already in Malaysia since 2003. Uh, in 2006, um, and the consortia of consultancy companies came together to advise the Malaysian government to make Malaysia the global halal hub. And I was one of the uh, advisors. Uh, I didn't come in as a halal advisor. I came in as a supply chain and cluster expert, uh, given my background on supply chain management and agriculture food cluster development. Uh, at that time, um, there was nothing on halal supply chain, nothing on halal logistics. Uh, and that triggered me to, to do research on that topic in halal supply chain management. So I started in 2006 also with my PhD on what is the application of halal in supply chain management. And that time I was the first person, first academic, had to do oh. research in the field of halal supply chain management. So as one of the pioneers on halal supply chain management. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Marco. So you you get involved in this topic in very, very, you know, early time. Because now, just now, some country now they started to talk about, you know, halal certification, halal market, but you already started it from you know early time, 2006. You know, so we are so eager to learn from your insight in this business. Uh, so uh, without further ado, so 
Dr. Marco, can you uh, please uh, share your presentation? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so the presentation is on halal certification optimization through productivity. And so when we talk about halal certification, we talk about halal. And the, the halal has its origin is in Islam. And so, um, so what does halal mean exactly? Halal, the technical meaning of halal is lawful according to the Holy Quran. But it's also more than that. And according to Abdul Hamid Evans, he says halal means lawful, but also wholesome, safe, healthy and pleasing. Abdul Hamid says halal is not just about the end product, it is the entire process. So from this definition, we have to look already at the supply chain. So not just halal from slaughtering or halal from production, but we have to look at the entire supply chain. Halal is part of the religion Islam. And what we know is that the, the, the halal market is a very big market, it's a 2.3 trillion euros dollar market, uh, consisting of food, consisting of also pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, modest fashion, um, and also Islamic finance, uh, which is another big area. So the halal industry is a very big industry, very attractive. Um, and we see that in the halal industry, not only participation of Muslim majority countries, also known as OIC countries. OIC stands for the Organization of Islamic Corporation, which are Muslim majority countries. So we see the participation also a lot in non-Muslim countries. So, for example, the biggest exporters of halal are China, also South America, also Australia and New Zealand are big players in the halal industry. Uh, Thailand is already a bigger exporter than Malaysia, for example, in halal industry. So there are some important mega trends uh, to, to, to address and to see. Uh, so halal doesn't shouldn't be taken from a product approach. Halal requires supply chain approach, similar uh, to food safety, similar to organic or cool chain. Halal requires an end-to-end -end approach. Also, uh, the halal industry benefits by locating themselves in halal ecosystems. So there are halal ecosystems being developed in both Muslim and non-Muslim countries to simplify halal for the industry, which will be important. The third mega, grand, uh, mega trend is that it's important to measure the performance of halal, the halal performance through establishing KPIs and building a strong halal DNA if you're active in Muslim majority countries. Um, that will strengthen your reputation and will protect your license to operate. Halal is not static. So when I started back in 2006 with my research on, on halal, I found out that halal is not static, but indeed is going through an evolution uh, from a product approach towards a supply chain and value chain. And so most Muslim countries are considering halal a product approach where a product can be halal certified based on their production location and ingredients and that there is a process of continuous improvement that is a halal product approach. A halal supply chain approach is an important emerging requirement for advanced Muslim markets such as Indonesia, Malaysia, but also soon the Middle East. Uh, a halal supply chain approach where is an approach to halal where halal is addressed throughout the supply chain from source all the way up to the point of consumer purchase. And the point of consumer purchase it can be at the supermarket where you're buying the products. If you buy products online, it is doorstep or when you're sitting in the restaurant at the restaurant itself. And the halal value chain is the fourth phase of the evolution of halal uh, where uh, the total corporate DNA uh, is being addressed. And so we see that halal is moving towards the halal supply chain approach and halal value chain approach, which is 
essential or very important uh, for companies to address if they want to be successful in serving the big Muslim markets, both in Asia, but also in the Middle East and in Africa. So when we talk about um, halal, when we talk about halal certification, the real core of halal certification is the halal assurance system. So similar to uh, quality certification like ISO or HACCP, uh, you have to develop a blueprint for your halal system. So it's good to understand uh, that the foundation of halal is quality. In fact, product safety and product quality are prerequisites for halal certification. So the starting point of the halal assurance system is building your quality system first. Second, the halal assurance system is always referring to the processes which are defined in the quality management system. So the halal assurance system does not replace the quality management system. It is a kind of module on top of the quality management system. So the halal assurance system is the management system that is required to implement and maintain the halal production of an organization addressing areas such as purchasing, procurement, processing, materials handling, but also the logistics. So those elements are need to be covered in the halal assurance system. So what are important components of a halal assurance system? So there are four important components, process, control, organization, and information. So when we talk about the process, it's important to address uh, the ingredients or components of the product. And so the ingredients or components uh, that are allowed are need to be assessed. And so we you need to provide uh, lab reports, ingredients list, and even uh, um, uh, the, the lab reports might be required, but also there might be required a visit of the halal authority uh, to the supplier of ingredients if it is animal-based. Also, primary packaging materials is important to address because the primary packaging is touching uh, the halal product. Uh, also, you have to look at the uh, process and materials uh, handling. Uh, so if the touching of the product along the process by persons or by equipment also need to be uh, addressed. And also the transportation and storage. These are all process protocols that need to be mapped uh, in a halal assurance system. So the halal assurance system uh, will provide also insight into uh, the facilities. So a halal certification is not only the certification of the products uh, that receive the halal certificate, but it's also location-based. So you need to have a facility layout that is part of your halal assurance system. And there should be a mechanism put in place for non-conformance handling of products. So if there is an issue with the halal integrity of a product, what to do uh, with the product, as well as a final management review. So every year, the management should review uh, the effectiveness of uh, the, the halal assurance system. Then the organization. So when you want to um, get halal certified, you have to establish an internal halal committee. So that is uh, similar to a quality department, is that a halal department. Is, this is not based with full-time people, so these are people from different departments that are meeting a few times a year and are also responsible for the implementation of the halal assurance system. And with the halal assurance system also come internal audits, similar to quality audits, um, and people need to be trained in the organization. So when you want to be halal certified as a manufacturer, uh, so the people in the factory operations need to be trained on halal. Finally, uh, with regards to information, 
uh, a proper halal uh, assurance system, uh, tracking and tracing should be in place. If there is an halal incident, you should be able to, uh, to properly trace it back uh, to the batch. Or if there's an issue also downstream uh, towards where it went to. Uh, so where did it go to which supermarkets or with which outlets? Uh, so information management is also important on freight labeling. Uh, so that the halal status is communicated on freight documents and also on the cartons. Um, because the logistics service providers and traders need to also comply with halal requirements. So proper identification of halal is important um, uh, as part of the halal assurance system. Um, so when we talk about halal certification, um, uh, from the religious point of view, from Islam, uh, there are some uh, critical areas when it comes to use of animal origin products and ingredients. So um, for the halal authorities that will be certifying uh, manufacturing organizations, so if you use any products, ingredients with an animal origin, it would always be a red flag for a halal certification body which need to come with uh, supporting documents. Um, so that is a uh, technical report uh, to check that the product is for halal livestock, uh, chicken, beef, that is halal, uh, whereas pork meat is non-halal in Islam. Uh, so if you use animal ingredients, so the slaughterhouse should also be halal certified and recognized. So if the Malaysian government uh, will be certifying a factory using um, products from a slaughter plant in, in Australia, that Australian slaughterhouse should be visited by the Malaysian halal authority. And so the moment you have any animal-based components, ingredients in a product, that is a problem yeah, because the halal certification body wants to go to, to the origin, to the slaughterhouse. Yeah, so Islam has very strong and strict regulation on the use of animal products. It can be meat, but it can also be enzyme. Um, and it can, uh, there's also prohibition of the use of blood. Yeah, so there are a lot of complexities also from the insect kingdom and there are a lot of prohibitions. So for example, the bee cannot be killed in Islam. So you can use the honey of the bee, but you cannot use all the components of the bee that require uh, the killing of bees. Uh, so when it comes to animal ingredients, there are a lot of issues with that. Uh, we have been advised to cosmetics companies that remove the animal out of uh, the ingredients of the cosmetics, which made halal much, much easier for them. So when we talk about halal certification, um, there are a few steps in halal certification. So the first steps in halal certification is establishing a proper halal certification strategy. Yeah, so when we talk about the halal strategy, uh, we need to look at, okay, what is the um, procurement strategy, production, materials handling, distribution strategy. Also, halal needs to be looked at from the branding and marketing strategy. So, for example, a scarcely dressed lady is not uh, in line with Islamic values. So, also, how you promote the product is important. Um, alcohol is not allowed in Islam. So, you cannot uh, uh, promote uh, a halal product in, in relation with a beer or a bar, for example. Then the halal certification strategy is critical. So which halal choice of halal certification bodies, more on that later. And also um, a corporate halal uh, policy is essential uh, for halal certification. So similar right, to um, quality policy, you need to have a halal policy, which you also can put uh, on the wall. Um, the zero-based assessment will assess each and every materials of the ingredients that go into the product, uh, but also uh, the packaging materials. Uh, red item management is the management of any 
issues with uh, ingredients or any issues with packaging materials. Um, uh, when you're using animal-based products, um, there might be some issues. We don't have enough supporting information or the halal certificate of that ingredient uh, is not um, the correct from the correct halal certification body. And in a zero-based assessment, we also assess the physical manufacturing operations. So that is a zero-based assessment. In the halal assurance system documentation, as a similar to an ISO documentation, we need to establish a documentation of the halal assurance system. Uh, so we need to put in there who is involved in halal, the so-called internal halal committee, uh, facility design, and then the details of uh, the documentation. Uh, then finally, the implementation. So what needs to be done is that the people involved in the halal business should be properly trained. Um, also, the production process might have some uh, preparation required for the facility or uh, the packaging, labeling, and so on. And then uh, the application with the halal certification body. Uh, so a halal certification body audit will consist of a documentation audit, and it will consist also of a um, physical inspection. Uh, the HALO certification board needs to see track record that you have been working according to the HALO assurance system. So normally about three months of track record is required for HALO certification. When they found uh, the paper-based inspection solid, then they will come uh, for the uh, physical inspection. So the whole process will take eight to 12 months uh, for companies from strategy up to certification by a HALO certification body. So there are many HALO certification bodies uh, to, to choose from. In fact, there are a few hundreds in the world. Uh, some are more reputable, like the Malaysian or Indonesian ones, uh, as compared uh, to HALO certification bodies uh, from, uh, for example, European countries. Uh, so there's a big uh, diversity of HALO certification bodies. So which HALO certification body then uh, to, to choose from? So if you want to use an HALO certification body, there are requirements on the production process and also on the ingredients being used. So there is a list by your HALO certification body, which HALO certification bodies are recognized by this, by your HALO certification body. So if you use ingredients, it is mandated by the HALO certification body these ingredients need to have a halal certificate, which is either ours or a halal certificate, which is recognized by our halal certification body. And so the choice of the halal certification is very important in simplifying your procurement, in simplifying your production. So you can imagine that the more halal certification bodies you use, which sometimes happens in the food industry, uh, where big manufacturers uh, want to be certified by the CB from Malaysia, as well as Indonesia, as well as Thailand. And so the more halal certification bodies you're using, the bigger the complexities are uh, for the procurement department. Uh, there are in, in particular complexities uh, regarding the use of animal-based ingredients where there are differences in interpretation in the animal slaughter process. So in particular, is stunning allowed or only non-stunning? Is machine slaughter allowed or only hand slaughter? So even within ASEAN, in South Asia, there are big differences between Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei. So choose your HALO certification body very wisely uh, depending also on criteria such as uh, which market uh, you want to serve. So some companies uh, have complex uh, products, a complex production um, design. So how to face the halal certification for a company? So there are a few decision variables in phasing uh, halal brands uh, for, for a company. So, for example, the first area is destination countries. So, Muslim countries, so the sell, selling halal products to Muslim 
majority countries would have a bigger priority than selling halal certified products to non-Muslim countries. When we talk about different volumes, so your products, your brands that are serving um, high volumes are mass market products would be a first priority to very specialized niche products. Animal base is what I mentioned earlier to certify uh, a product which has no animal ingredients is much easier. So therefore there should be a priority for the certification of brands that do not contain animal based products as compared uh, to, to products, niche products that, that have animal based products that these are longer processes normally uh, to get the product hollow certified. Food has a higher priority for certification from an Islamic point of view as compared to non-food such as cosmetics or, or pharmaceuticals. Finally, um, we have the complexity of production. Uh, so some products are only produced in one location. Some products are produced in multiple locations. Um, products that are produced in a single location have a higher priority than uh, products that brands that are produced in multiple locations, which is a longer process. Why? You can only carry a hollow logo of a brand which is produced in multiple sites when, when each site has been confirmed to be compliant. So again, multiple sites uh, require longer lead time for, for certification. So what are the benefits of hollow certification and what are the challenges? I think, first of all, hey, the, the benefits of the halal industry is a big industry, a big market, 2.3 trillion US dollar global market. Um, it consists not only of food, it also consists of non-food. We talk about cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, um, also um, uh, lifestyle, hotels are also part of that uh, also hospitals. So the halal industry is a fast growing industry. Um, more countries, also non-Muslim countries are involved in the halal industry in production of products, but also services. Uh, logistics is also part hey, of the halal industry. So it's a fast growing industry. Um, we also see that, that halal certification is going mainstream. Halal certification started in Muslim majority countries such as Malaysia and Indonesia. But we also see now that, that non Muslim countries, non OSC countries, are also um, standardizing production. So instead of making a factory for halal and a factory for non halal, what we see is that companies are now standardizing production, halal certified, also when they're based in uh, non OSC countries. So, for example, uh, um, Unilever, uh, they manufacture ice creams uh, for whole Southeast Asia from Thailand. So Thailand, a non-Muslim country. Uh, so what they do, the factory in Thailand is certified halal and they produce their ice creams uh, for different markets. Some of them from Muslim countries uh, like Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei but also for non-Muslim countries such as Thailand, Vietnam, and Singapore. Yeah, but all those countries, uh, their ice creams are halal certified. So we see that halal goes mainstream and will be easier yeah, to just get it halal certified for the whole facility instead of having halal and non-halal um, certified facilities because also non-Muslims can consume halal. Yeah? So halal is not only for Muslims. So to simplify manufacturing, we see that halal is going mainstream. And it's a big, big change. So what are the challenges? Um, and we see that, that halal is not, is not static, it's dynamic. And we've seen that halal is moving away from a product approach uh, towards supply chain and value chain. So you need to be proactive in your halal assurance system and uh, further developing halal capabilities along the way yeah, to meet these emerging requirements. Um, halal regulations are complex. Yeah, we see different standards. So Malaysia has a different standard from Indonesia, has a different standard from Thailand, has a different standard from Saudi Arabia, uh, for the UAE and so on. So if you want to be active in multiple 
Muslim majority countries, uh, you have to 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 understand uh, what are the domestic requirements and 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 sometimes uh, you need to be certified uh, by by a different whole standard in order to uh, um, effectively sell to those markets. Uh, finally, also it's important how to design uh, your halal certification strategy, uh, how to make halal as easy as possible is important, uh, to make it sustainable, make it as easy as possible, uh, given uh, the markets uh, you want to serve. Um, so if you talk about uh, optimization uh, of halal certification, I think three areas are, are of particular importance. So uh, QMS, quality management system, um, ecosystems, and key performance indicators. These are important tools that to optimize halal certification. Uh, quality management system, first of all, uh, ensures that, that processes are properly mapped and control points are being identified. So when you have a mature QMS system, which ensures that the processes in the organization are properly mapped and you're familiar with control system. What you do with Halal is you add in Halal control points in your processes. Secondly, also QMS uh, ensures an efficient traceability upstream towards the source and also downstream uh, where the product went into the market, which is a requirement in halal standards that you have an efficient traceability in place. Finally, a proper QMS also ensures a system of continuous improvement. And so QMS is a very important as a productivity tool, ensures a proper mapping of processes, ensures efficient traceability, and also a system of continuous improvement. Halo ecosystems are important as well in the optimization of halal certification. Uh, we have seen developments on, of halal ecosystems in Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, and also uh, other countries' ecosystems uh, in the world. So traditionally, halal parks uh, ecosystems were industrial zones for halal industries. The future of halal parks is not only an industrial zone for halal products, but also creating a halal cluster, also addressing halal supply chain technology, addressing sustainability, and also Islamic finance. As a similar like Silicon Valley in the US for the IT industry, halal ecosystems are developed for the halal industry. Uh, the Islamic Development Bank recently conducted a study on halal ecosystem in Muslim majority countries and have identified uh, those halal parks as key building blocks of halal ecosystems, in particular important for Muslim majority countries, but they also expect um, those halal ecosystems to be, to be developed in non-Muslim countries to simplify halal production and supply chain in non-Muslim countries, which are serving Muslim majority countries. One of these examples of halal ecosystems is in Indonesia, is called Modern Halal Valley. Uh, Modern Halal Valley is a 500 hectares halal industrial zone um, established in Indonesia, uh, about one hour drive from the capital of Indonesia, Jakarta. Uh, this has an industrial zone for small producers, SMEs, but also big brand owners in food, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, logistics. It also has a services area, which is hosting a halal lab, but also education, research, and uh, trading companies. Uh, we also have in blue logistics zone, so that is storage, but also uh, connecting uh, to the seaport of Indonesia in Tanyong Priok via rail. So ecosystems will be the future to simplify halal for industries in serving at a fast growing halal market. The final area in optimization of halal certification is in key performance indicators. 
So key performance indicators are extremely important for companies that they are serving Muslim majority markets in Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. So our firm, LBB International, we have been developing um, an algorithm to measure the hollow performance of companies, of brand owners. And I would like to share with you uh, some of those key performance indicators. So when you talk about a helicopter perspective, eh, hollow key performance indicators will help you to increase eh, the productivity of the company, in particular, the hollow reputation of the company. A strong halal reputation that is associated with a strong sales, high sales figures in Muslim majority countries. So the higher the reputation is of the company, the higher the sales are in Muslim majority countries. Secondly, a brand owner is establishing a halal supply chain. And the integrity of a product, a halal product, the halal integrity, the halal assurance of a product is a function of the entire supply chain. So a strong halal integrity of a supply chain is, is based on a proper performance of the halal integrity. And I've worked on different KPIs uh, that measure both uh, the halal reputation as well as the halal integrity of a supply chain. So the uh, first... Uh, Halal uh, key performance measurement is halal maturity. So this KPI is also based on the evolution of halal at those four halal phases, Muslim owned company, halal product, halal supply chain, and value chain. We have defined 21 criteria for measurement uh, to measure the halal maturity of an organization. Um, this is important to measure, which also allows you to give objectives and goals. So by 2030, I want to have a score of the whole supply chain of 50, my hollow product at 90, and hollow value chain at, at 20. By 2035, I would like to have a hollow product level of 95, hollow supply chain at 50, and hollow value chain of 35. And so you can put objectives in place. So the hollow maturity measurement is the most important KPI for companies as a predictor also for the halal reputation of a company. Halal trust is another indicator. It's a lagging indicator. It shows more or less uh, the, the, the past, uh, the, the current uh, performance. Um, the halal trust is a measurement to measure the perception, the image of a brand. Uh, the image is extremely important to measure, uh, to understand how does the Muslim consumer uh, look at your, your product. It has uh, different dimensions. The Halal Trust score it gives a measurement on uh, the strength of your Halal logo. Uh, so the Halal logo of Malaysia is a stronger Halal logo than, for example, a halal logo from a non-Muslim country. Uh, halal excellence is important, um, transparency, um, and those indicators will form a total score. So this score of halal trust is based on a, a survey, a consumer survey, which can be done for one brand, can be done in one country, or it can be done in, in multiple countries. Hollow reputation index is a hollow reputation index is a quantification of the hollow reputation of an organization. So that is one measurement for an entire organization. And it shows what is the reputation of that organization, which is a predictor for the sales in Muslim majority countries. So the higher your hollow reputation is, the higher your sales is. It has four important dimensions. First of all, halal authenticity of a brand. It's looking at the halal DNA, what kind of structures are in place of the company and roadmaps. Um, trust of the halal certification body is how, st how strong is the halal certification body, the brand and the, the logo of the halal certification body. 
So if you use uh, the Hollow Certification Body of Malaysia, you will get uh, top scores as compared to a Hollow Certification Body uh, from, for example, Australia or New Zealand, which has a lower score uh, for the trust of the Hollow Certification Body. Uh, internal messaging is the messaging within the supply chain, which is based on uh, the contracts you have uh, within your supply chain, um, the, the strength of your supply chain partners, like your logistics provider, your distributors. Um, so that is defined by the internal messaging. The external messaging is based on what can we find on the internet. So if I put in your brand of the company and hello, uh, what do I what do I see on uh, Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, Google? Do I see a positive association or a negative association or a neutral association? Did you have an incident before Hollow incident? If so, uh, what 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 was the effect of that incident on on your brand? So so the Hollow key performance indicator is a very important one to measure the reputation of the organization and a predictor to sales. You can relate that halal reputation index to different markets, and then you get the licensed operate rating, which would be useful if you're serving different Muslim markets to see what are the emerging requirements, change of halal standard, what is the implication on your license to operate. Um, the final measurement which we developed in the LB International is the Halal rating. The halal rating is an overall halal ratings are quite similar to financial ratings, a triple A, double A rating, B, C, or D. So this can also be used to, um, to measure this for your company, put it in your annual report for companies that are serving important Muslim markets. Um, so in conclusion, um, I think the, the halal industry is a fast uh, growing industry is not only food, it is also cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, um, services as well. So it's a fast growing industry, uh, I think, which is um, too important, too attractive to ignore. Uh, it's a big industry, uh, but it requires halal certification uh, as an entry uh, for those markets. We have seen that, that um, the foundation of halal is, is quality. And so the quality as basis is your first start. If you want to be active in the halal industry, if you want to be halal certified, you first of all should have uh, your quality system in place as a prerequisite uh, for halal certification. Uh, we have seen in my presentation uh, that there are four important steps in certification. First, establish a good halal strategy, uh, looking at which halal standard we should have uh, which halal certification body we should use uh, to get the product or products halal certified and the phasing also uh, of a brand. Zero-based assessment to assess the ingredients, the production facility, build the halal assurance documentation, and finally implementation up to certification by the halal certification body. Or in case you choose multiple halal certification bodies, then we talk about multiple halal certification bodies. Um, what we have learned is that be very careful in selecting the right hollow certification body. Better to have only one. That's easier. The more hollow certification bodies, the more complex uh, your hollow assurance system will be and also the stability of your system. Uh, in case you have multiple brands, also you have to look at the phasing uh, of hollow certification for the different brands. Start with simpler products and simpler production method as compared to the more complex, which you might want to do at the later stage. Uh, I presented to you some strategies in leveraging productivity advantages. So we talked about the tools in um, QMS. We also looked at the role of halal ecosystems, which are being developed in Malaysia and Indonesia, and also the importance of use of halal key performance indicators. So not just conventional KPIs, but halal should also be uh, represented at top management level and should be made uh, measurable. So you need to measure the performance of both uh, the 
uh, reputation as well as the halo integrity. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Marco, for the very insightful presentation. So, um, so I, I totally agree with you that the halal certification is not the end of product; it's the entire process, and it kind of you know is all about the reputation, about the trust. So we are very happy to see that you know there's a kind of you know some benefit that productivity can chip in to optimize the process and be you know uh, beneficial to the businesses. So now we come to this uh, Q&A session. So there are several questions that we, we, we would like to explore and also look for your you know advice. Uh, the first one is very basic thing. I think that uh, also uh, we receive a lot of you know uh, concern about our APU members about the product. So if and they would like to know if there is any kind of product that do not require HALA certification and, and how, how the business can know if their product fall into this uh, category. Yes, can you please explain? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Son. Um, so products like fish, so they don't require halal certification. Also like products like fruits and vegetables, they, they, they do not require halal certification in principle. But the moment you start processing them, then for certain countries, they require certification. So for Malaysia, a tomato doesn't require certification. But the moment you are chopping a tomato, then they consider that as processing. Then it falls under the regime of, of halal certification. Um, also, certain halal authorities like Indonesia, they have a kind of green list uh, where certain agriculture products do not require certification, even if they are processed. Uh, like for seeds uh, and nuts and so on. Uh, so there are differences in interpretation uh, with regarding to halal certification. We see that halal certification is, is more important in food. Uh, so food has a higher priority in halal certification, whereas uh, cosmetics and pharmaceuticals uh, are quite new in halal certification. So, so cosmetics and pharmaceuticals, you see that now being halal certified in Malaysia, Indonesia, but not yet, um, or hardly in the Middle East and, and Africa. And so, so if you're in the food business, yes, you really need to get halal certified. Um, even for uh, certain basic agriculture products which you process, then better look at certification. Cosmetics, if you want to be successful in Malaysia, Indonesia, better get halal certified. For the Middle East and Africa, not important yet. Uh, pharmaceuticals the same, so important for Malaysia and Indonesia, not yet important in Middle East and Africa. But I also expect in the coming five, ten years will also be important for those markets. Packaging, uh, primary packaging, uh, so that is also looking at making it mandatory for all certification in the Asian market, not yet in the Africa and Middle East market. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Marco. So to my understanding from your explanation that it also depends on uh, the requirement of the country, right? Uh, so some countries, they may require for that type of product to be HALA certified, but some may not. So some of us also, some country, they also concerned they, they would like to have like HALA certification for salt and vegetable, for example. So, so to, can you advise if this product can be also, you know, uh, do the HALA certification? Yeah, so there are different standards. So, so, so every Muslim majority country has its own standard. Uh, so there are differences in interpretation. So uh, depending on which markets you serve, uh, depending on the products, uh, you need to, to, to do some shopping and understand which is the right HALA certificate uh, to use. Um, there are international standards being developed uh, by OIC SMIC based in Turkey here. So I'm part of the technical committee TC10 uh, in charge of the halal supply chain standard. So there are some attempts to harmonize uh, halal standards, uh, but uh, that is still uh, a, long, uh, a long way to go. And particular differences are in, in production standards. Uh, so it is not yet like the ISO, like HACCP, uh, 
uh, or ISO standards uh, that, that are, there's only one. We see some harmonization happening in South Asia where Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, Thailand, Singapore try to harmonize those standards, but these are very long processes. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Marco. So another question regarding, you know, what you have said is the uh, standard. So is there any common global standard for HALA certification or the requirement will be very, you know, different from country to country across, you know, different uh, sector and industry also. And is it feasible to have a, like uh, international recognized standard like ISO standard? And then why is it so difficult to have a such kind of standard? Yeah. Can you please also explain about that? Yeah, so, so halal is, is from the religion Islam. Uh, so very sensitive for Muslim majority countries and are different Islamic schools of thoughts. Uh, there are different mm. religious rulings. There are different local customs. So they have been shaping uh, what uh, halal is for a country. Um, there can also be religious rulings be issued by religious authorities in Muslim majority countries to make changes to what halal is. So we we still see that that uh, that that countries uh, want to have their own halal standards and that um, harmonization is going on uh, between countries in South Asia, uh, but that is a very long process. So therefore. OSC SMIC, they want to harmonize, but they have also challenges to get Muslim majority countries accept uh, their halal standards and use the OSC SMIC standards, which I think they've done a great job as, as international uh, standard development body. Um, so as we speak, um, the, the halal strategy is extremely important for brand owners and um, to make the right decision on which halal standard or standards to use, uh, which halal certification to use um, is very important. It's a complex matter, so that's why an advisor uh, would be useful uh, to, to get help uh, in this, this complex because there's not such a thing as an international halal standard yet that is adopted by everyone. So that's not yet the case. So they're being developed, but the adoption process, I'm afraid, will still need to take a significant number of years. And certain Muslim countries, uh, they have certain requirements. If you want to enter my market, these are uh, the halal requirements. So these are issued by Muslim majority countries, what they consider as halal. What are the requirements to enter these markets uh, from a halal certification point of view? So if you want to enter that market, if you want to export, you have to follow. Uh, it's mm. simple like that. Yeah, thank you so much. So I understand that because of the uh, kind of, you know, religious practice, it is uh, already interpreted differently in many countries. So you also kind of challenges to have like a global or common standard like the ESO because it's, these standards are very technical. But this funny guy, you know, uh, religious and a different country have a different concept and interpretation so and practice it may di be difficult yeah we can understand that uh so coming back to the hala certification so uh you already talked about the food industry so is there any other business or services that will be you know applied for hala certification also and and how do these enterprise ensure compliance with hala standard in their services in some sector like business and hospitality, tourism, and finance, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's correct. So you have in the tourism area, so you have Muslim friendly uh, hotels, Sharia compliant hotels. So you have different uh, categories uh, of hotels, which can also be certified. Uh, also, hospitals, you have already in Malaysia and Indonesia where you're also looking at halal, uh, not only for the food being served, but also looking at, at the um, service area so that a that, um, lady doctor is operating a lady patient and that the man doctor is operating or serving a man patient. patient. Also looking at the um, medicines being used in hospitals. Uh, so... 
Um, so that is a very important, I think, emerging uh, industry, the service sector. Also, we have the logistics industry uh, for warehousing, uh, transportation. Uh, I'm currently advisor to the development of a halal compliant port in Malaysia, Kuantan port in the, the east coast of West Malaysia that is looking at halal certification. Uh, so we see that in the ports as well. And um, we also see that in Islamic finance. So we have banks uh, that have a Sharia window, uh, Sharia compliant banking where there's no interest. Um, and also uh, they call it Takafu, which are an uh, alternative uh, to insurance. So there are also a whole portfolio of services in banking financing available for uh, the Muslim consumer, which are not interest-based. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Marco. So we see that the halal certification in the halal industry is now expanding very rapidly. It's everywhere in every sector. So uh, I have another question regarding, you know, these, uh, uh, the compliance with halal standard, because you also mentioned about you can apply some uh, methods and also some tools uh, to also to enhance the complying with HALA standards to optimize to facilitate the HALA certification. So how how can the business can harmonize and balance within this method and also uh, between the profitability and competitive edge? For example, because if they want to comply with the HALA standard, they will you know it's some it will add some cost to their uh, mm. operation, right? So how can how can they balance? between the yeah. profitability and competitive edge? I think an excellent question. So, so if you want to get halal certified, you, you want to make sure that uh, your costs do not increase. Uh, so it has to be efficient. So that's why that, that some companies said, uh, instead of we have a halal production and non-halal production, let's simplify, let's do everything halal. So I think that that's one. So by organizing it smartly, uh, the cost shouldn't be be higher. So that is one thing. Also, you can make halal as difficult uh, as you want. So so you have to be very careful in your design. So bring an expert on board that can help you to simplify halal that you you are not incurring unnecessary cost. Uh, so productivity is very important uh, to, to, to keep it as an important focus. So halal should not be more expensive than conventional production. Design it smartly so that your costs do not escalate. And uh, like that halal ecosystem uh, that are now being developed, that uh, could be one of uh, the ways uh, to uh, reduce cost and leverage uh, synergies in the halal industry. Yeah, uh, so so work together. So we have we've been working on collaborative platforms in, in Halal Plus Network uh, to to increase synergies and 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 reduce cost as an halal industry. It is a big industry. Uh, so try uh, to collaborate, work together. Thank you very much, Dr. Marco. So I think that also your in your presentation, you also that's why you also mentioned some productivity tool that can help also to the businesses to cut costs and so to increase their efficiency so that they can also you know optimize their operation cost uh, so that they can enhance the compliance uh, with the halal standard and without increasing the cost. And also after all, we need to have very uh, holistic in approach, right? We have very clear at the beginning, as you said about. We need to have a strategies on HALA uh, certification, which kind of, you know, certification body we should approach to, should apply to, and the market, something like that. And so it's very, you know, useful. Uh, I, I, I want, I really want to put more questions, but actually we are running out of time now. So maybe I, I think that maybe we have another session on that later on. So uh, can you please, uh, I need to, we need to stop right now. So. Could you please give a final uh, remark and message to our viewer? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Son. It was a great honor to talk uh, to you uh, on the importance of, of halal certification. Uh, and we see that, that uh, non-Muslim majority countries are big players in the halal industry. 
Um, and it doesn't matter if you are producing in a Muslim country or a non-Muslim country. Yeah? You can uh, serve those fast-growing markets. Um, if you want to serve those markets, uh, make sure that you have a proper halal strategy. Make sure you get certified by the right halal certification body. Um, develop a proper halal assurance system and look towards halal, not just at uh, get it certified. So the certification of your factory operation is not the end goal. I think it's the start. Uh, it's the license to, to operate and serve Muslim markets. But we are, you have to understand that halal is moving towards the supply chain and value chain. Uh, so you need to use uh, productivity tools uh, to, to protect uh, your halal assurance system and create a strong reputation. Uh, so that should be, I think, an important focus. Uh, the halal industry is attractive. So I think it's too big to ignore. And I think uh, there, is, uh, there are opportunities in food, non-food, uh, as well as services. It's a big industry. Um, and if you take halal serious, uh, the Muslim consumer I will take your products and services. Thank you so much, Dr. Marco. I cannot agree more. Uh, the halal business is too big to be ignored. So we have to be pay attention to, we have to be well prepared. So we are very happy to hear from your inside how we can chip in, you know, how productivity can help business to enhance and so to facilitate them in halal certification. So thank, once again, thank you very much for your time and also valuable insight today. So to our viewer, we hope that the session has helped you understand about the HALA certification and benefit of productivity to optimize the certification process. We also hope that you have gained some idea to apply in your business. The IPO will host more P-Talk on different topics. Please subscribe to and follow our YouTube channel for continuing updates on current productivity issues and resources. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again soon. So thank you Sam, very much, Dr. Marco and our viewer. Please take care and goodbye for now. They see you in a great talk. Thank you. Bye-bye.